G'day fellow travellers, welcome to Astro Biological. Have you ever wanted to explore an alien planet or moon? If you're watching this video and you're anything like me, the answer is, hell yeah! I think about it all the time. Astro Biological is all about exploring worlds beyond Earth and whether life could exist out there. There's plenty of life here on Earth. This planet is practically crawling with it. Life is being found tucked away in all kinds of weird places. Nice place too. I'll talk more about the creatures that live in these extreme places known as extremophiles in a future episode. But for now, check out this old one I did. Don't laugh, I had a go. Now life does have a pretty good here, so it does okay, getting into all kinds of trouble. But did you know there are bunches of other places in the solar system, our neighbourhood, where life could exist? There are even places where it may have existed. That is a very, very cool thing to think about and explore. I'm going to use some B-grade special effects and homemade editing to take you to one special place, a place where life may exist, right now. A place I like to call Europa. Now, there are a bunch of theories trying to explain how life began. To this day, there's still not really a rock solid explanation, but there's no shortage of theories. Europa has been the heart's desire of many an astrobiologist for decades now. Ever since the Pioneer 10 probe brushed past back in 73 and sent back the first pictures, it's been a bit of a rock star. Why? Because it ticks a whole lot of boxes on the things could live here checklist. Let's look at some of these boxes and why they're important. Let's use the magic of B-grade special effects to actually go to Europa right now. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, there it is. Wow, what I wouldn't give to actually visit it. Anyway, back to work, Ben. First of all, one. Europa is now widely believed to harbor a substantial subsurface ocean of actual honest to gosh water. How have we come to this conclusion? Take a look at the surface of Europa. Sure is striking. Huge channels and streaks crisscross the moon's frozen exterior. But that seems to be about it. No craters. That's weird. Have you seen pictures of just about anybody in the solar system? They're all a mess. Craters, impacts, things smashing into each other. The solar system is a violent place. Look at Mercury. Look at the moon. Even Earth has giant craters. After the dinosaurs, they know all about giant impacts. Now take a look at Callisto. Callisto is part of the Jomian family too, and is the most heavily cratered object in the solar system. Compared to Europa, Callisto is a teenager with weapons grade acne. Ugh. Back to Europa. Europa's surface is geologically new, having been resurfaced recently in geological terms. Something's wiping the slate clean on Europa, and this is our first clue that Europa is special. Now something under that icy shell is acting upon the surface and rearranging it, and astrobiologists think that it's water. A lot of it. Europa's surface is basically a shell of ice, rafting and fracturing like pack ice on Earth. Essentially, vast swathes of ice, pack ice, remodel the European landscape and are thought to be its version of our plate tectonics, like continental crust here on Earth, which slides around on top of a hot squishy layer of magma, so too that these ice plates also slide around in a kind of alien continental drift. It's checkpoint two. So it goes like this. Some time ago, none other than the venerable Charles Darwin postulated that life begins in a warm little pond somewhere where the right combination of mineral salts and energy resulted in the first biomolecules being created. Uh, what's that effect? There. Welcome to Cooking with Life with your host, Chef Ben. Say hello, Ben. What do we need to create life? First, to get things started. That's right, Chef Ben. Good job. We require an energy source, a whole lot of water or H2O, and finally, Organic compounds and mineral salts. Throw into the pot. Agitate gently. Ah, oh, good job, Ben. 
Nice work. Stand back. Watch the events unfold. Yes, Ben, we see. We understand. Oh dear. Oh. Uh, ben, what have you done? Mm. Quick. Quick. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Quick. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, uh, cut, cut, cut. Oh my god, it's out of control. Oh dear, oh dear. Somebody help me! Ben, come back, what are you doing? I need you here. It's running rampage. Ben, hello? Oh, please come back. Oh, well, well you're no help then. Good job, Ben. Great episode. Enough of this tomfoolery. And back to the real work. Now, ever since this first speculation, forwarded in a private letter from Darwin to his friend Joseph Hawking in 1871, science has placed an emphasis on water as the likeliest birthplace of life on Earth. Now, Darwin believed in a warm little pool, and many other theories were thought bigger, fingering the ocean as a culprit. Whatever the case may be, and whatever supporting evidence gives testament to it, water, for now, is the one thing no life can exist without. And Europa has a lot of it. The deepest point on our planet lies at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, a place called the Marianas Trench, some 12 kilometers below sea level. Now that's pretty deep to be sure, but the abyssal plains of the world's oceans are on average about four kilometers beneath the waves. Europa's subsurface ocean averages a cold, dark 62 miles down. So where do the minerals fit the this in? Patience, Grasshopper. Jupiter pumps out extremely high levels of electromagnetic radiation. This is, of course, a constant engineering hurdle for the various visiting spacecraft over the years. Its extensive family of moons, some 67 in total, I think, I may be wrong, are constantly immersed in this field which interacts with various bodies in various ways. Europa's magnetic field is no different and is an induced magnetic field. This is a special kind of field produced when an electromagnetic field is passed through some kind of conductive material. In the case of Europa, this material is believed to be an ocean brimming with conductive mineral salts. Hmm. Thus an ocean would be a vast salty brew, fulfilling Darwin's vision somewhat. Okay then, deep salty oceans. What of Darwin's energy source then? Checkpoint 3. To understand this a little more, and to see what it means for Europa, we need to understand that all life requires an energy source. On Earth, the vast majority of life is solar powered. No solar power is not some fandangled idea. Renewable energy has been around, well, since before life began. The sun provides energy, not only for Earth's climate and hydrological cycles, it also fuels all photosynthesis on Earth. Plant life not only provides food and oxygen for animal and fungal life, it also contributes to climatic processes. Yes, the sun is pretty damn important. Oh, you think? So how does any of this relate to Europa? This frozen little moon is a bit further out from the sun than the warm little Earth, at about 485 million kilometres. Not much use for solar power out there, I guess. Well, it turns out that life on Earth is not completely dependent on the sun after all. Enter the hydrothermal vents. These are exciting, mysterious places, home to a bewildering and diverse array of life forms. They have found where life seemingly has no business existing, and yet there they are, miles away from any sunlight, subjected to pressures and extremes that would kill us instantly. Life thrives in a hostile alien world. These ecosystems are based, not on photosynthesis, whereby sunlight is converted into food source for plants, but chemosynthesis. Down here, life has found a way to steal a phrase from Jurassic Park. Sorry. Literally, bacteria have evolved to survive at the hellish temperatures and pressures around these hydrothermal vents where the water can reach temperatures of over 350 degrees Celsius. With nothing but a rich mineral brew spewing forth from these vents out to the ocean floor, these bacteria have learnt to make use of this brew. These bacteria then form the basis for some of the most intriguing ecosystems on the planet. Now, these vents are actually an oasis of life, all alone in the abyssal night. Does Europa have the capacity for such vents far beneath the ice? On Earth, the vents are geothermally heated. Earth possesses a core of molten iron, heated by slow radioactive decay of elements from the formation of the planet 4.6 billion years ago. This internal heat eventually reaches the upper mantle of the planet, seeping through in more threadbare regions of the Earth's crust. 
but Europa is heated by Jupiter itself. How so? As the moon orbs the gas giant, tidal forces act upon it, squeezing and massaging within. Resulting frictional forces are believed to sustain a heated core, which, just like Earth, could provide energy to keep systems of hydrothermal vents running on the abyssal plains of Europa. So Europa may tick some really important boxes for the existence of life. Water? Definitely check. Mineral and organic compounds? Yep, highly likely, check. A source of heat to power possible life? Meh. Possibly, check. So, the only thing now for us is to visit, to get through the icy shell to the ocean beneath. And we'll be doing that real soon, hopefully. If you liked this episode and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Not only that, hit the little bell next to it. That'll keep you up to date. Oh, and feel free to give this video a like. Every little bit helps. Well, thanks for watching Astrobiological, giving you the universe in plain human. See you next time.